wabarakatuh. Welcome to season 2, the new season of Islamic finance at the capital. First and foremost, I would like to introduce our new co-host for season 2 of Islamic finance at the capital, Miss Shabana. What is the similarity that you see between Islamic finance and you? Do I get a prize for answering the right question? You don't have to get a prize, but it's always important to try and answer the right question. Okay, I can say that Islamic finance and myself, we are both young and dynamic. Talking also about Bank Islam Malaysia Berhad, let us now look at the interview excerpts that you had with Professor Dr. Saiful Azhar Rosli on the episode of the development of modern day Islamic banking. Uh, and and uh, the Islamic bank, uh, Bank Islam as a commercial bank, uh, runs uh, just like in any other bank, where they are required to hold capital. And with that capital, they will mobilize deposits. And uh, deposit fund will be used to uh, make financing, basically, to extend uh, financing facilities to the customer. Well, in, in other parts of the world, uh, uh, the first Islamic bank was set up in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, uh, that was back in the 60s, uh, the Mid Gamar Bank. And then it was followed by a bank in Dubai. And we have Baraka Bank that was set up even before Bank Islam Malaysia In the 1960s, I mean, what in, happened in the, in the between uh, the death of our prophet and then <laughs> there was no Islamic banking in, in, in between or well, what, what happened? Well, basically in, in history, in history, we, we look at the system of uh, trading that exists in history where the trading activity require capital. And capital are basically mobilized to uh, mudarabah or trustee partnership. Kuala Lumpur to be Islamic finance hub for Standard Chartered. It has been reported that lenders seek to capitalize on Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur due to the long-standing experience and expertise in the sector. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Season 2 of Islamic Finance at the Capital. Kopsha is a latest cooperative entity under the uh, National Cooperative Movement, also known as ANCASA. It is part of the uh, Cooperative Transformation Program, specifically targeting to the, towards the financial sector for the Cooperative Movement. Asali Trusty Berhad actually is a trustee company set up to look into the preservation of wealth and also at the end of the day, distribution of wealth for the Muslim Ummah. So we are actually established basically to look into the needs of the Muslim community, uh, namely in Malaysia. Okay, uh, based on the fact that uh, the size of industry currently is worth more than one trillion US dollars, and if we see the growth rate of the industry, which is about 10 to 15 percent mm -hmm. per year, so this shows that the, the the development of industry is uh, very uh, promising in the futures. In addition to that, that uh, if we see the participation of in, in the industry, mm -hmm. so uh, the non-Muslim uh, society is also attracted to this uh, Islamic banking and finance. So this shows that uh, the future is uh, really bright. We can see the uh, Sharia committee decide to uh, to approve. Uh, the, uh, the one particular product, uh, mm -hmm. whether it is Sharia compliant or not, is based on the contract approach. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, for the future direction of Islamic finance, mm -hmm. it is uh, uh, absolutely not enough. Mm -hmm. We need to go beyond uh, the. The coin a very simple understanding relate to uh, God concept, concept, consciousness. Yeah, and God consciousness relate to essence. Uh, this is something uh, spiritual in nature and perspective. So during the month of Ramadan, uh, we see that uh, uh, the importance of this con God consciousness, we undergo the process of, let's say, uh, tarbiyah or training. Yeah? Some will say that as madrasa uh, Ramadan. Yeah? So this madrasa kind of training yeah, to educate ourselves, not only to educate our mind, but 
to educate our soul. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned about the role of women, whereby Rasulullah says, "Wal mar'atu ra'iyatun ala bayti zawjiha wa waladihi, wa hiya mas'ulatun anhum." Which means that a woman is a shepherd for his uh, for her husband's house and her husband's kids and then he uh, she is responsible for them so based on this one if let's say i were to choose between industry and the family i will of course choose the family but alhamdulillah so far it is still manageable Bismillah walhamdulillahi wa bihi nasta'in First of all, thank you very much uh, to Capital TV again uh, invi uh, inviting me to be uh, your guest all right? uh, to share some of my thoughts in regard uh, with the celebration of Eid al-Fitri Okay, so when we uh, refer to the narrations and traditions of the prophets uh, I can summarize that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he uh, celebrate Eid al-Fitri, first of all, he will uh, rise early in the morning. Okay, rise early in the morning. How early is early compared to normal subuh prayers? Yeah, before subuh prayers. Eh? Before subuh prayers is actually the norms for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because he will uh, normally uh, ask for Allah ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa taala according to the. Quranic text wal mustaghfirin bil ashar so those who is uh, always ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the times of you know before subuh the courses cover all these uh, areas huh? it's not simply from uh, just uh, islamic studies kind of thing huh? it's an integration we sometimes you also say like islamization of uh, knowledge right so it encompasses uh, conventional education and also Islamic uh, education. So that includes from conventional even uh, accounting, statistics, uh, research methodology courses, right? And uh, economics, particularly macroeconomics. Recently, we can see that uh, basically there are more diversified funding sources or funding pool with regards to Sukuk because it covers both conventional as well as Islamic investors. Right. So if I were to issue a conventional instrument, uh, uh, not I, uh, I mean a company were to issue a conventional instrument, they would not have access to that diversified pool that you were talking about. Yeah, because uh, reason being uh, for conventional instrument, right? Con for conventional instrument, it is basically restricted to conventional investors. Arahnu, the differences between Arahnu and conventional pawnbroking. Uh, the major differences, uh, the first one is on the uh, charges. Uh, we are charging safekeeping fee instead of uh, the conventional one. We are charging the interest base. Uh, the safekeeping is charged on the total value of gold itself, uh, what we call nilai marhun. But uh, the uh, conventional pawnbroking, they charge on the financing given to the customer. The, the actual money given yes, is best. Uh, so basically, Islamic uh, financial planning is uh, the way that we uh, we plan our wealth, the, the Islamic way, which I will explain later on what are the principles, what are the differences from the conventional financial planning. Yeah. Eh? And basically, we are, when we are talking about Islamic wealth management, it is at the macro level. And the micro level is the financial planning. Anaki is actually means purity or pure, clean and also genuine. Right? So that is actually uh, related and uh, uh, to our target in our services because our services is to help the public and general public and also corporate companies in terms of making purifications of their wealth, their earning, their spending, their investment and whatnot. Yeah, so that's why we are choosing this name.